A privately owned spacecraft is set to land in the moon's southern polar region tomorrow. If successful, it'll be the first US lunar touchdown in more than 50 years. Joining us live now is astronomer at large, Fred Watson. Fred, always good to see you. Thanks for your time. Tell us a bit about this mission. How close is the spacecraft to the moon now? It's uh, currently in orbit around the moon uh, and uh, everything is going very much to plan, which uh, is excellent news, of course, especially since this is the first privately, uh, you know, privately operated mission to the moon and certainly the first American mission to the moon, as you said, in more than 50 years. So uh, it will begin its uh, deorbiting manoeuvres in the small hours of tomorrow morning, our time, and we're looking at the possibility of a landing uh, around about uh, 9.20 or thereabouts, uh, Eastern Australian daylight light time. Because when you look at the history of moon missions, it's not really a great success rate, is it? I read only about 40% have worked out as planned. Not that long ago, we also learned that NASA's Artemis moon missions have been delayed. Why was that? Why is it, were you still finding it so tough to get to the moon so many years on? Um, because space is hard. <laughs> and uh, I think it's fair to say that compared with the Apollo missions, which were driven in the 1960s and 70s very much by a political imperative, uh, compared with those days, we have a regime which is much more risk averse. Uh, we won't take the same risks to send humans to the moon, for example, which is why the Artemis program has been delayed again, not by very much. We think 2026 for the first lunar landing by humans after all those years. But um, the, the landscape has changed. There is now a lot of interest in the moon from the potential of resources uh, as a staging post, perhaps to Mars, and many other reasons why we want to go back to the moon. Now, Fred, we learned a bit about an Australian space discovery this week. Researchers here have found a black hole so huge that it swallows the equivalent of one sun every day. Yes. That really boggles the mind when you think about it. Um, everything about this thing boggles the mind. Its, uh, its mass is about 17 billion times the mass of the sun. Uh, its luminosity, the amount of radiation it emits, is 500 trillion times that of the of the of the sun, which means it probably outshines Taylor Swift even uh, in today's parlance. Uh, it is a discovery, as you said, made by Australian scientists, and it's a beautiful example of a partnership that was brokered back in 2017 by the Australian government with an organization called the European Southern Observatory, which operates the very best telescopes uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, up there in Northern Chile. Uh, the, the object was discovered actually at Siding Spring Observatory here in New South Wales, but not recognized as being anything particularly out of the ordinary until it was examined by these much bigger telescopes in Chile. And uh, the, as I said, the, the deal between ourselves and the European Southern Observatory has been extremely productive. Gosh, fascinating stuff. Good on them and good to hear that Aussies are, are so involved in all of this. We are, Fred, waiting or on standby for an old satellite to crash to Earth. I don't want to sound too alarmist, but I believe it should be happening sometime tomorrow. Do we need to be worried about where it's going to land? Do we know where it's going to land? It's pretty heavy, isn't it? It's already landed, Ashley. It uh, fell down oh, in the... Oh, it's landed. Okay. In the... Yeah, or, or not so much landed as a seed, I guess, because it landed in the ocean, North Pacific Ocean, uh, in the small hours of this morning, actually. Uh, a a, a, a re-entry of a spacecraft that's more than 30 years old. Uh, it's been an exemplary return of this spacecraft uh, to the Earth's atmosphere. Most of it burned up. There was a debris trail. We don't know whether anything actually fell into the ocean, uh, but its progress has been closely uh, watched and recorded. Uh, a very successful mission. The Earth Resources uh, uh, Surveyor was the satellite that actually uh, allowed us to see how the Earth's resources were panning out over a long period of time uh, of order 30 years. So um, a fitting end, in a way, to a, a triumphant European mission. Fred, good to hear that news from you. Thank you. We can stop worrying about that one now and cross that off the list. <laughs> Always appreciate your analysis and insights, Fred. Thanks so much. Great pleasure. Thanks very much, Ashley.